Hello everyone. Welcome to scardia.com. I am your educator Dr. Lara Munir and today in the fascinating world of neurology we are going to talk about muscle paralysis or muscle weakness. This is an overview of muscle paralysis or muscle weakness and it is as it is a very exhaustive topic and it is not possible to cover all the various facets of this uh, presentation so we are going to give you an overview of how we are going to approach some a patient with uh, muscle paralysis what are the various types what are the various problems that can present as a uh, weakness of the muscle we are going to start uh, with talking about defining certain terms muscle paralysis what is muscle paralysis what is the term what do the term paresis mean what is plegia quadriplegia paraplegia we are going to define certain terms to make a clear demarcation of the various presentations afterwards after defining the terms we are going to start off by uh, discussing the upper motor neuron what are the various signs and symptoms of the upper motor neuron weakness how do we differentiate it from the other presentations how do we differentiate the lower motor neuron weakness what are the various uh, areas of the central nervous system uh, that uh, comply to the term of the lower motor neuron weakness how do uh, on the basis of the reflexes on the basis of the tone on the basis of the babinski sign we differentiate the two the upper motor neuron weakness from the lower motor neuron weakness moving onwards after talking about the nervous system of the nerves we move to the level of the neuromuscular junction what are the various pathologies and what are the areas of the neuromuscular junction these pathologies target that can present us with the neuromuscular junction weakness then we are going to talk about the various myopathies uh, what do these myopathies mean what are the various types of myopathies whether it is a muscular dystrophy or an inflammatory lesion or certain myopathies with the muscle fiber necrosis how do they present and how do we differentiate them from uh, the an upper motor neuron or a lower motor neuron or an nmj or neuromuscular junction weakness problem if we are unable to find out any organic lesion then uh, very commonly there might be certain underlying psychiatric pathology that is presenting it with the organic sign or a weakness we term them under an umbrella of the somatization disorders we are going to look at uh, with a very good psychiatric history and a minimal mental state examination <clears throat> whether it is a certain psychiatric problem that presents at weakness it is also a very important component of uh, muscle paralysis and we have to look at the patient on the whole then we are going to uh, discuss about the various terms and how do these correlate with the upper motor neuron lower motor neuron or various types of muscle weakness the various terms being the hemiparesis or the paraparesis which can involve both the legs quadriparesis which involve all the four limbs or a generalized weakness then uh, what can go wrong at the level of an if uh, one nerve or a monoparesis if it involves only one part of the body or if we have a classical distal weakness with the gloves and stocking appearance or whether it is a proximal weakness or with the shoulder girdle or the pelvic girdle muscles what are the differentiating points what are the common causes of all these types of presentation we are going to discuss them and clinically how do we differentiate uh, from one representation from the other <clears throat> similarly we can present with a weakness in a, a reduced or a restricted distribution for example the weakness might be restricted to an extra ocular muscle and we have just an extra ocular muscle involving a cranial nerve for example the fourth nerve problem can present with just an extra ocular problem and everything else might be fine so these give us a very good clinical uh, sign or an indication to, to localize the area of the nervous system which is being affected and leading to the weakness then at the end we give you a very good and a neat flow chart to find out how do we initially work up a patient with weakness how do we work up patient with hemiparesis or quadriparesis whether we go for a spinal mri first or a brain ct first or an emg first so this is this uh, all this drive is being derived from our history and clinical examination <clears throat> so to watch this complete lecture on muscle weakness please log on to scardia.com and you are uh, when you log on to scardia.com you are going to see that you have access to thousands of other medical lectures as well be it be the basic sciences involving the anatomy physiology or the clinical side of things with internal medicine neurology psychiatry anything of your interest log on to scardia.com and start a free trial today thank you